Hi everyone and welcome to the video series for Living Without My Life with Food Allergies. I'm Lauren and I blog over at Oatmeal with a Fork. Today I'm going to be showing you one of my personal favorite recipes, the quinoa pizza crust. Now, pizza crust in the allergy world seems to be the holy grail of recipes, and I think I've nailed a pretty good one here for you. So let's get started and I'll show you what you need to make it. Okay, the first ingredient you're going to need, obviously, is quinoa. Now this has been rinsed, then soaked for eight to 12 hours, and then rinsed again. So this is it, swelled with some water. Also, you're going to need one and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, a healthy half teaspoon of salt, a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of water, and then some olive oil for drizzling onto the pan. Okay, so we already have the soaked quinoa here in the food processor. I'm going to add in the baking powder, the salt, and I love this recipe because it is so few ingredients. And then the water as well. And then we're just going to put the lid on and process everything until it is completely smooth. Okay, you want to be sure to let that process for a good two, maybe even three minutes so that it, everything gets well incorporated and it creates a nice smooth batter, no lumps of quinoa left. Um, so we're going to get our pan ready and I'll show you how to make this. Okay, what I did with my olive oil is I put it in my miso and that allows me to put a nice film of olive oil right on top of the parchment paper which I should say in advance here, you need a pan lined with the parchment paper, otherwise this will stick horribly. And then I put the olive oil right on top of the parchment paper so that the pizza does not then stick to the paper. And then I just wanna take my batter. Now this is thin crust style. So I am going to dump out all of the batter and then just smooth it out, slowly smooth it out. It's a very, you're gonna get a very rustic shaped pizza. It's not going to be perfectly square or perfectly round, but you'll still get nice slices that'll hold together well and that you'll be able to pick up easily. And it's nice that the batter is thick enough that you can put it where you like it. You wanna probably get it about a third of an inch quarter inch to a third of an inch thick in thickness. Make sure there are no holes and just smooth it out nicely, just like that. Okay, we're gonna put this into the oven at 425 degrees for about 20 minutes and then we will be back to see what it looks like. Okay, and here we have the ready-made crust all nice and baked and holding together well, and I'm spreading my homemade pizza sauce onto it, which the recipe for that is on my blog if you're interested. Otherwise, you can use whatever store-bought sauce you have on hand. And we're going to then sprinkle, I'm going to sprinkle mine with some mozzarella cheese. You can do, if you have an allergy to dairy, you can use whatever cheese you like or just vegetables, however you like to top it. I'm gonna do a simple one today just to give you an idea of what the finished product looks like. We're gonna pop this back into the oven at 425 for another five to 10 minutes until the toppings are cooked through. And I'll see you back here in just a minute and we'll check it out. Now here we are with the finished pizza and let me just show you how well it holds together and it tastes incredible. Now let's recap. In the crust, five ingredients. No eggs, no dairy, no nuts, no gluten. I hope you guys get a chance to try this delicious allergy-friendly pizza, and thanks for watching. Bye.